Hi guys and welcome to my tutorial on how to flash iNav 7.1.1 with the O3 uh, air unit compatible firmware. Um, essentially this is just a follow-up video. Um, as you may know, I've been trying to remove all the question marks from as many elements as I can and I think I've reached the point where I can say I'm happy with it for now. I'm sure that there will be more improvements in the future but um, you can find all the firmware for all the supported flight controllers on my Google Drive link. Um, so yeah, let's uh, dive straight in and we can have a look at how you can do things. First of all, obviously, connect your flight controller. And if you have already got a setup on it, I strongly recommend you to uh, go into the CLI tab, press the default button, and just make sure you save that text file. Now, I already have saved this, so I don't need to do it again. But um, one thing that you want to make a note of before we continue is just highlight the string that comes after the forward slash. So that's the name and the target name, essentially, of your flight controller. You want to make sure you copy that. Go on to the Google Drive page. It, might not load all the flight controllers, so just scroll all the way to the bottom. Then you can hit Control F and just paste that in, and you can see that we've got two flight controllers which have this name. I'll be downloading the one that is appropriate for me. So you can see, there it is. That's the file that we'll be flashing. And in order to start, the flashing process, you just need to type DFU into the CLI. No need to press any buttons, uh, but on some controllers it works and on some it doesn't. So you might have to actually still press the button to get into DFU mode. So just follow whatever instructions or whatever works best for you to get it into DFU mode. Um, go on to the firmware flasher page, load the firmware, to downloads firmware there we go and then hit flash firmware now of course you have to select uh, full chip arrays that goes without saying so this should just erase what's on the flight controller and just rewrite it with the custom built firmware um, where you won't have any question marks what we can do in the meantime is we can have a look at the OSD layout, um, this file is what I will be supplying as well because obviously your configuration, I have, there's no point in giving you a default from what I'm using, um, but the OSD stuff you can get uh, directly from the folder called CLI OSD commands. That file there, that text file, is essentially what we have here and this is if you want to get exactly the same OSD as what I'm using, okay? So, basically, that's that. It's nothing more than that. Um, we can see here, programming successful. So now we can go into the welcome page again, connect to our flight controller. Now this time, we just say keep current settings. If you have a beeper, it might be beeping at the moment. Um, just go into CLI again, and this time, click load from file. I saved mine to the desktop, so we can see here. There it is, the Baby Air Wing Pro is what I'm using today. I think that this is my diff file. Yep, there it is, and we can just press execute. So this will basically just load whatever I had uh, that was different from the default. That's why it's called diff. And once it's done, it will save the configuration and it will hopefully go back to the main setup screen. So let's just wait for that. There we go. Now it's rebooting. Applied all the settings. And then we can go into the OSD tab just to make sure that we have selected 
all the things that we might possibly need. I'll put a link to my previous video as well, or just go into my channel and find it there. But you will be able to find like how this looks like in the DJI goggles. Um, I've provided a goggles recording. Um, you can select from all of these types of crosshairs. The only one that is not available is the aircraft crosshair. The aircraft crosshair is the same as the default crosshair. Okay, so these ones are different. I like type 3 because it's a nice circle in the middle. And yeah, um, that's kind of like my favorite one, to be honest. You can choose any other you want. Um, something that you might want to have a look at uh, that might be different with your settings is this here. So obviously I've got my channel 6 is my stabilization. I've got manual, um, acro, and horizon. And on the RTPH, which stands for return to home and position hold, that's my channel 7. And that just shows me um, whether I'm in return to home mode or position hold mode, apart from the fact that obviously I will get a message right there. Um, something that you might want to add uh, maybe for another element. Um, the only element that we don't have, I mean, well, at the moment, iNav doesn't have um, an icon for this, is the TX power. Okay, so you can see here, we don't have an icon for this. And because it's just a milliwatt sign, we don't have the milliwatt sign. And it doesn't make to, like, it doesn't make sense to put a watt sign because it's not like 25 watts, it's 25 milliwatts. So to keep it not confusing, I've just made sure that it's blank. Um, but what you could do if you wanted to add more text is you can go here, select the text field, and just write TX for TX power, for example. Then you need to go down, enable the custom element 3, and just align it where you think it's best. So, of course, you will have some overlap. So, if any text is actually overlapping, you will get a flicker. So, you might want to position this down or next to it or somewhere else where there isn't actually anything blocking it. Um, otherwise, you might run into some difficulties. Um, but yeah, I'm just giving you ideas. I don't think I'll be using that. Um, when and if, and hopefully when, uh, iNav does provide anything here for TX Power, then I will add that or, uh, you know, whatever is like the most suitable uh, that DJI has at that point in time. Um, so yeah, uh, you can see all the elements on my default layout are the ones that are currently 100% without um, a question mark. Um, I hope that you will like what I did. And if you have any comments, if you have any suggestions, please leave them in any of the comment sections, either on Facebook or YouTube. And I'll have a look and I'll go through. And yeah, if you have any good suggestions, then of course I'll implement them. And I'll put an updated version of those files um, right there in the firmware folder. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, if you did, yeah, you know what to do. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching.